I was reading an article recently about the Christmas story from a popular news outlet, and the author said, it's difficult to see those angels today because we live less in an age of wonder and more in an age of anxiety, fear, and cynicism. He went on to say, I don't believe that one can die from lack of wonder, but I'm certain that a deficit of it will ensure that one has never really lived. And see if that's true then I wonder how many of us are really living. Because anxiety, fear, cynicism, they are the great enemy of wonder. One evening last year around Christmas, we decided to go to the big St. Nick store here in Denver. And if you haven't been there, you gotta check this place out. It is one of Colorado's Christmas gems. I mean, this store is Christmas everything, and we go at least once every year to help us get into the Christmas spirit. And on this particular evening, our youngest son, Bricks, was completely beside himself. I mean, he cried the entire car ride. And when we pulled into the parking lot and found a parking space, Tammy, my wife, said, you get to deal with him, I'm done. So we all get out of the car, and I get Bricks out of his car seat, and I carry him across the parking lot towards the store, and he's still fussing about God knows what and putting on quite a performance. But when we walked through the front door of St. Nick's, everything changed. His tears stopped immediately. His eyes got as big as saucers and he didn't make a peep. I carried him throughout the store and at certain times I would lift him up and let him get a closer look. He was completely silenced by the thousands upon thousands of lights. You see, there is this primal sense of wonder and awe in the face of a child when they are fully absorbed in the moment. And at the same time, they're completely caught up in the anticipation of just what kinds of experiences are right around the corner. And I think it is the purest form of joy. But life has a way of beating that wonder and awe out of us, doesn't it? You get betrayed. You lose someone or something. Things didn't go the way you thought they would go, especially this year. So you pull back and you give yourself to fear and anxiety and your heart gets a bit hardened. You retreat deeper into your cynicism. And your cynicism keeps you from experiencing Christmas, the new thing God is doing. Your cynicism keeps you from staying sober and serene. Your cynicism keeps you from going deeper in your relationships. Your cynicism tries to convince you that you're right and everyone else is crazy. Your cynicism tells you it's a good idea to pick up another drink or just keep using because, well, why bother? Your cynicism reminds you of the stark truth that more than 81,000 Americans died of a drug overdose from June of 2019 to May 2020. The CDC tells us it's the highest number of overdose deaths ever recorded in a 12-month period. And your cynicism dashes your hope and says, screw it, I give up. He or she is just going to become another statistic anyway. Your cynicism keeps you from seeing the angels, from hearing their message of good news. I mean, they shouted from the rooftops, don't be afraid. Joy is coming and it's for everybody. God hasn't forgotten about you. God is with you even in the darkness. And it's interesting, isn't it? In the Christmas story from Luke's gospel, the shepherds were guarding their sheep at night in a very tumultuous time in history. Living within the first century Roman Empire, and this was the most powerful empire the world has ever known. And they were only shepherds. They knew a thing or two about dashed hopes and darkness. And they never really knew what was going to happen next. And then, the Lord's angel stood before them. The Lord's 
glory shone around them and they were terrified. Good news is announced and they're terrified. Now in the Greek, and remember the New Testament was written in Greek, that word terrified can also be translated as awe or awestruck. So the story could read, and they were filled with awe, or they were awestruck. Makes you wonder, doesn't it? In that moment, when things were a bit dicey, were they overtaken by fear and anxiety and cynicism? Or were they overcome with awe and wonder? You see, Jesus invites us to experience the new thing God is doing in the world. And he says, to do this, we must become like a child. If we want to re-enter again into the wonder of the Christmas story, we have to become childlike. Not childish, but childlike, and there's a difference. Because childish says, well, I'll just stand here and, and cross my arms and tap my foot because this is just the way it is and nothing new is ever going to happen. But childlike says, maybe God is up to something. I wonder what's just around the corner. Cynicism always invites you to retreat. Wonder invites you to expand. Fear keeps things small. Wonder makes everything bigger. And see, the problem is, if we're honest, we sometimes approach the Christmas story of God bringing good news of great joy with a yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that story. I'm familiar with it. But it's for them, not me. My brothers and sisters, what would it look like for you to enter the story again for the first time? To become aware that there's something bigger than you happening here. To actually come face to face with God's light breaking through the darkness. Perhaps Christmas this year is inviting us to become like a child, to reclaim this strange awareness we call wonder. Hey everyone, I'm so glad you've been with us and part of this community this year in 2020. And I hope you have a very Merry Christmas that is filled with hope and peace and joy and love.